How we doing? We're back again at the workbench. Um, we're going to start assembly. We've cleaned up this home light Super 2. Um, just a few minutes worth of cleaning and you can see that it, they come back to life really nice. Um, the inside of this one, if you look here you can see that I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but the inside of this, the piston looks really good. Um, and the inside of the cylinder looks fantastic. So this is going to be a good runner. You can also tell by looking at our, our sprocket. There's just a little bit of wear on this sprocket. Um, if we look at this sprocket, I've got another sprocket here that you can see that it's, it's got a tremendous amount of wear to it. Um, it's this, this saw doesn't have a lot of time on it. Um, most likely somebody's used it. I mean, they, they built these saws in mid, mid to late 70s. Um, and nobody's taking care of it. It was a used and put away until it didn't run and then now I have it. So with that being said, um, we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna put fuel lines in this fuel tank. We're gonna get the fuel tank mounted up um, we're going to get the coil set. The po I've already cleaned the points. I cleaned the points off camera. Um, the bearings in this feel really good. Um, we'll get the carburetor on it, get our, our reed valve assembly back in it. Um, so let's get started. What I did, or what I like to do, is clean these tanks out. You can use mineral spirits. Um, I suppose you could probably use um, some type of degreaser. The reason I like to use mineral spirits is it does leave a clean oil free surface. Uh, it is flammable um, but not near as flammable as say gasoline. Um, in my opinion using gasoline to clean parts is a bad idea. Um, I like to use mineral spirits. I do wear gloves um, to keep it off my hands as much as possible. But anyway, let's get started. We have two tanks here. These tanks sit in here like this. Okay, this, this back tank is your oil tank for your bar. The front tank is your fuel tank. Um, inside of here, typically on these, these tanks, a couple things happen. There's these little, what they call duck bill valve or vent it lets the it lets air go one direction or fluid go one direction and not the other direction typically you can buy those um, online get a hold of um, oh shoot I forget the guy's name now uh, Leon at Leon's chainsaw repair Leon has a lot of home like stuff uh, get a hold of Leon he'll ship them to you he's he's I bought stuff from him and he seems to be a great guy. Um, the part number that his part number is going to be a 69451. I usually buy 10 at a time. Um, they go pretty quick. But if you need home light chainsaw parts, Leon's your guy. Um, he is a YouTuber. You can go on find his YouTube channel. Uh, I think it's Leon's Chainsaw Repair. Uh, great, great information out there. But anyway, enough talk about that. Let's get started. So we've already cleaned our, our filter. This filter shows some signs of it's old, um, but it's all there and it's clean. What we're going to do is we're going to pull this line off and go ahead and get rid of that black line. And I've got some Tigon line here that we're going to use. Um, I've been very happy with the Tigon and fuel. Um, it's not doesn't last forever, especially if you're using ethanol fuel. Ethanol fuel is really really bad for these chainsaws and small engines. There's so many aluminum parts. The ethanol attacks the aluminum parts. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to take and cut this at a small angle. It makes it easier to feed the line into the tank. just like that. Okay. 
There's two holes in this tank. This hole is where your one of your duckbill valves go in there, in that hole. And they just simply press in place. If you have one of these saws and you notice that it's leaking fuel, every time you move the saw, chances are this duckbill valve is bad. Just push them in like that. It's just that simple. That goes like that. This other hole is your fuel pickup line. You're going to feed that down through there like that. And I like to reach in with a pair of needle nose pliers and pull it through. Then we'll clip this off where we made our little V. And we'll put our filter on. Now, you want this to touch the bottom of the tank, obviously. Make sure your fuel line's long enough to touch the bottom of the tank. You want it somewhere mid-tank. And when I say mid-tank, I don't mean this way. I mean side to side. Um, obviously, if you get it all the way over here, that, that's fine. But minimally, somewhere mid-tank. I use the old fuel line to determine how long a, of a piece of fuel line I needed. So that tank's ready to go. We'll set our tank off to the side, then we'll go to our oil tank now. Same situation. Um, these oil tanks, a lot, a lot of times what happens is the fuel line rots off of them. When the fuel line rots off, there's this little tiny piece of brass. I don't know if you can see that or not. This little tiny piece of brass goes on the inside of your fuel, or of your your oil pickup line or vent line. One of those duckbill valves go on that. And they just simply press them, press in place again. What that does, it allows the crankcase pressure, because the oil system in this is, is pressure fed from the crankcase, it allows that to, to let pressure into the into the tank and not let the oil into the crankcase. So what we'll do, again, we're going to cut a 45 or a 60 or some, an angle on this. Oops, I got the wrong size line, I think. Nope, oh, that's it. We'll reach in here and pull this through again. Okay, that'll make a nice seal. We'll cut our angle off of here. Sometimes when these come off, generally you'll find them in the bottom of the tank. And you can get those out most of the time, unless somebody's already done it and didn't put it back on. Most of the time they'll be in the bottom of the tank in thick, nasty oil. You can rinse your tank out, like I said, with mineral spirits or some type of solvent. And generally run it through some type of strainer to make sure you have it all out of there and you don't you don't lose your barb. I have had to use pieces of small pieces of copper pipe, brass tubing. <clears throat> I don't have any right now. But you can go to a hobby store and buy brass tubing the same with the same dimensions as this.
Then we'll simply just pull this back through so that it just sticks in like that. That's all we want. Just so that it vents inside the tank. We'll get another piece of line. I've already cut an angle on this one. And we're going to feed it through there. pull this through. This one's kind of a challenge. It's a little further down in the tank. But we'll pull this through here. Again, we need to make sure it reaches the bottom of the tank, and it does. Uh, we'll trim this off. And I'll have to get a filter. I should have a filter over here in stock. Let me grab a filter real quick. What I did is I took this out of another tank. Um, I didn't have a new one, but I did have another tank. And in the bottom of that tank, lo and behold, is the old piece of brass tubing with the duck bill on it. So we'll wipe this off. We'll get this on here. Our camera batteries are running low, so probably have to cut this video just a little bit short. Again, you want to make sure that your filter or your pickup is all the way in the bottom of the tank. In this case, you're going to want it over in here. It's kind of a bear to get in there. Can get it in there. Okay. So there's our line replacement. We'll hook these up. Um, you have two two nipples here. One of those is for crankcase pressure, the other one goes directly to the pump. I believe, I'll have to look, but I'm fairly certain they go like this, where your pickup line is here, and the pressure is here. But I'll have to double check that, and we'll, we'll confirm that in the next video. Thanks for watching. Look for our next video.